So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and play a segment from Kanye West's latest interview on Fox News, and then I'm going to give my position and my take and the problem with what Kanye is saying. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He's also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his friend Candace Owens, unveiled a t-shirt that read simply, White Lives Matter. The response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform. Shock, horror, rage. There is no excuse for this, thundered the New York Times. West is legitimizing extremism, shrieked Rolling Stone, etc., etc. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the T-shirt about? No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Instead, the enemies of his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Too crazy to take seriously. Look away! Ignore him! He's a mental patient. There's nothing to see here. But is West crazy? You can judge for yourself as you watch what we're about to show you. He has his own ideas, we can say that. Creative people tend to. That's why they're artists, not actuaries. His freeform social media posts give the impression of a man channeling his rawest emotions right onto Instagram. The effect can be jarring and is often used as ammunition against him in the battle for influence over the minds of America's young people. And that battle is intense. But crazy? That was not our conclusion. In fact, we've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. But again, you can judge for yourself. Here it is. So you just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed and you have a lanyard still on from it and there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life and pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What, what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen, I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one, and that's God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm starting to see why they want to make you be quiet. Um, how? When did you start to feel this way? When did you start to realize this? I I really felt like I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him yes. and every single person in Hollywood, from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to you know my my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me like if i said that i like trump that my career would be over that my life would be over uh they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that they threatened my life they put my life they basically said that i would be killed uh for uh wearing the hat I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit, and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> you know, you know, God builds warriors in a different way. I don't know if it's because of me being a born in Atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know. He made me for such a, such a time like this. It's like with David, you know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, you thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position, I have my heart, but the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. So we can all agree that it's a good thing that Kanye West is boldly sharing his faith on the news and that he's taking a bold stance in regards to pro-life. He even brought up David. Kanye has revealed that, that there's persecution that he's facing within his own family. 
even stressing the fact that his own life has been threatened because of his stance on Christ and pro pro life and uh, even his uh, his ch his choice to support Donald Trump. Now, with all that being said, which is good, Kanye West has also made it known on his Twitter account that Joe Osteen is one of his closest friends. Okay, that he has received brotherly wisdom from T.D. Jakes. Kanye West also still makes music with cursing in it, collaborations with other satanic rappers that speak about death, sex, drugs, and murder. So why is all of this sad? Why is this a tragedy? And I'll tell you why. It's one thing to be persecuted for the sake of Christ, even unto death, as long as you truly are in Christ. That's one thing. It's a whole nother thing to receive the same persecution, yet you still are lost and dead in your sins. Imagine dying for a faith you don't even truly possess. Now that's a tragedy. Okay? Kanye West needs to understand that Christianity is not one foot in and one foot out. On one hand, he's standing for the lives of unborn babies, and on the other hand, he's collaborating with rappers that joke about getting their women to have abortions. You're either all in for Christ or you aren't. There's no middle road, and the lukewarm will be spit out in the end. Uh, Kendra writes in, and, and she says, Living as a Christian in an urban, secular world, I often feel like a minority among my neighbors and my peers. My biblical worldview is offensive to most. So what encouragement do you have to a generation that is faced with being missionaries in a culture that sees, that sees things that are antithetical to a biblical worldview as being progressive? Wow. Well, you know, I appreciate that question. I, I really do. And it shows a lot of insight, shows you've thought through things. And uh, you write very well. But, and I'm going to say something. It's not trite. I'm not being funny. But here's what I would like to say to you. Welcome to historical biblical Christianity. All over the world today, Christians are suffering the same thing, but uh, in many cases far more extreme. All throughout church history, this has been the case. Uh, we're always that peculiar speckled bird. We don't fit. Now, that's becoming more apparent to your generation. You know, I, I heard someone recently, and I don't know who it was or what media it came through, but someone was complaining about, you know, how the West and the United States, North America, is so far away from God and the Christian influence of 30 years ago isn't there anymore and all this. And someone wrote in, would you rather have have it like it is now or like it was before where more people pretended to be Christian? Mm -hmm. and, and and that's you know, that that's not just some smart aleck saying it's, it's really true. Christianity has always been a minority, a true Christianity, true converted people in the kingdom of heaven. And you're never going to fit in this world. Now, you want to be very careful that you don't do strange things that the scriptures don't command so that you fit even less into this world. But no, this is what it means to be a Christian. And know also that if in any way you're being marginalized, uh, set aside, made fun of, uh, the Beatitudes themselves, blessed are you when for the sake of Christ, not for the sake of craziness, but for the sake of Christ, um, you're persecuted, even in the smallest, smallest way.